Hi, how's it going? This is Chris. Oh, I had a bit of a break between the two because it's the summer here and holidays slash vacations are on. But um, it's time that we got down to doing some of the things that need to be done with this. So one of the things I'm going to be looking at now is the creation of the armour for the leg. So if I go to my front viewport I can see roughly where I'm going to start building this out from. And there's a couple of options I can do here. Okay, So I can either work from, say, a plane or I could work from a box with obviously some sort of a set height or I could also work with splines and then extrude the splines now for me my preference is going to be probably working here with um, a plane because I can work on the thickness of the plane later on that's not really an issue so what I'm going to do is basically just start cranking up the segments that I need for the very basics of this okay now if I go into perspective and just move this along just for the moment you can see that one of the things I need to do is to bend this right so if I was to take a copy of this or reference even okay so that everything that happens until the reference gets applied to this yeah and then apply a bend to it and then give us like a 90 degree bend On one of the axes. There we are. So, 90 degree bend on this axis. Yeah. So, we've got lots of opportunities now to kind of tidy it up. So, 180 degrees is actually what I need. And let's have a look and see what kind of size I'm looking at here. But it's actually surprisingly a lot more difficult doing this leg armor nonsense than you would think okay because it's not a great shape really now I can adjust the length and width of this a little bit so maybe 150 by 150 and then we can just kind of adjust it from there so let's have a look so the height and the width a bit better, maybe a bit more there. We don't want to limit its movement, so I've got to be very careful on what I'm doing here. Let's let auto save do its business. Okay, so like I said, it's important to kind of get this in the right position to start off with. It'll make our job considerably easier. Okay, now I can stick an edit poly on this. Okay, and with my edit poly on, I can now start messing around with the shape a little bit. You'll see it becomes kind of a little bit weird at this point. Okay, but every time I kind of click out again, you'll see that it fixes itself. So don't get too freaked out. Okay, now I am going to start building some internal parts here. So for that, I can bridge. I don't want to collapse my polygons at all, that's important. Okay, so with these three fellas here, one, two, three, and this one, so four really. What I can do now is do a connect and just up the amount of connections I've got. Yep. I've always noticed the arrows on this are really sensitive. There we go. So that's the correct amount thing about that is that I should be able to select these ones here. I'll just use the select tool for this. See the reason I'm doing it this way, which to you probably seems like a really long convoluted way, is because I get so much control over the thickness and all the other things. I don't have to throw it into an FFD if I'm doing this. And that's important for me because it means I've still got a lot more control over my model, so I'll do it again here. Plus, once we've got a basic shape, the good thing is that we can kind of replicate these a lot. We just need to get the real basics working first. Okay, so just bridge those as well. Okay, now if I look over here, you can see, obviously, 
we go. This one will now spring it back into shape. Okay, I just want to get the kind of basic shape on this working before I do anything else. to make sure I'm affecting the correct axis for my taper next. Because as you can see that angles this, which again makes my job easier and I can apply a curve to it. Which I most definitely want to do. There we go. So now we're narrowing at the top but not at the bottom. Okay, and that'll do for me. So now I can take this, right click, convert to editable poly, and that will stop it being influenced by this piece here. So now I can keep this piece if I want or do whatever I want to it. I don't really need it, so I'll get rid of it, which may prove to be an erroneous step, but you know what? I'll live with it. Now we're going to look at the shape of this again. Remember, I want to avoid using FFDs until later on. Now I'm using FFD 3x3, and I'm just going to click here. So that will obviously select control points and then I can use my scale tool just to start pushing the shape because I don't want to go for the kind of regular shape that people are probably expecting with this kind of model. Okay, my view is that the leg armor needs to be a bit nice. Okay, convert to editable polygon. Now I'm going to get this one and this one and this one and this one. And I'm going to extrude them both. I'm going to extrude them both by zero for the moment. Click tick. And by doing that, I can now get my move tool and just bring that out once. And then again, shift and drag. Boom, come on, cancel. I've got to extrude them first. So extrude, click tick. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I can just pull this out again. And this time I'll just use the tool there and in order to get these here and here a bit straighter too what I'll do is I'll just hold down control and double click on both of them and just straighten them a bit like that okay and that gives us these shapes which are a much nicer shape now I'm going to get these because remember this is all just about achieving the basic shape that we need first Go in there. And I'm going to take out these ones. There and there. Okay, and now just go into my bridging tool. So, bridge. There we go. That gives us those basic shapes there. And then at the top, here, what I'm going to do is do this one. Okay, and for this corner here, okay, I'm going to get this one and see this one. Now these two aren't perfect 90 degree corners, so if I do an extrude on those and change this to local normal and then jack this up, you should get an interesting shape like that. Okay. Now there's a reason why I want all these weird funky ass shapes, so do bear with me. But one of the things I need to do is just the edge here. Because you can probably see that it's not quite right. So if we adjust it by hand. So a quick look at it couple of them you see just kind of wonking over a little bit so take that to there and don't be worried about damaging your model because this is supposed to be kind of battle used anyway so if it ends up being a bit bonky you can just say to your viewers oh it's battle damage battle damage that's a perfectly legitimate reason yeah if they like continue whining about it just trying to go you know do rude things to themselves with that pickaxe handle okay that's looking not bad now what I'm going to do is take everything on the top of this, just there, and lower it. And then I'm going to take everything just here and raise it. 
Okay, so we get this weird kind of crenellation job going on. Now, ignoring my chair's squeaky moaning, which it does a lot of, what I'm going to do next is probably adjust it with an FFD again, because I want to just get the bottom part looking a little bit more together. Can't see my FFD, so I'm going to collapse it and then stick FFD on again. Now I can see it. Okay, because at the minute it looks like a dress. I'm trying to avoid that kind of look. Okay, let's have a look at that. Start pulling shapes a little bit more. And there. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that's better. Okay, now there's no indication on how this kind of attaches really in any of my plans, but that's okay because I've decided that I'm going to kind of wing the attaching of this once I've uh, got everything working because it's going to attach at the top of the knee socket. So right click, convert to editable polygons, make a quick copy of it like so, which will be our reference model. Our reference model will have Turbo, no, 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 an open subdiv on it because I decided I like open subdivision. Trois iterations. So at the minute that's pretty smooth. Now what I want to do is go into this one and just start putting some extra edges around it. So I'm going to straight to swift loop first. Should allow me to put an edge in there and there. So if we look straight over here now, you can see that it's kind of started clipping the thickness of this piece, which is important. Now, I'm going to have to do some bordering on this, so I'm going to start putting in some borders on it. And I'm trying to be as careful about where I place the borders as possible. There's too many borders, it's going to look like clown shoes and make our model here start to look a little bit straight edged in places where we won't want straight edges. Okay, so one there, one there, and then here, and here, I think, jar east here. Right, so now I've got enough be going around all the edges with. Um, I also need to adjust the bottom of this because I want a bit more curvature on it than I actually have, so I'll let auto save do its business. Oh, it always takes me so long to get back into a modelling frame of mind. It really does. Oh, that's a swift loop. I didn't want swift loop on that one. What I want a gentle curve on these so we can see the mechanic parts. A bit like a sweepy curtain. And then at the edges here and down here. Bring those up. Like that. I'm going to bring this out. And the shape on this should be fine. I like the angles and stuff. So I'm going to go into this. And just go around this edge now, just using the select tool and being very careful. Now we can do this in small segments if you want, but it's not a good idea. It's better to do it all, and that way we won't get weird kind of leftover polygons that probably shouldn't be there and stuff, okay? So remember, patience, and it'll look nice. And what we're going to do as well is we're going to do a couple of bevels, that way we don't have to basically go into a swift loop. Okay, see that? We need a swift loop here. There we go. Okay, and 
keep selecting these around the edges. Remember, keep it on just select mode. We don't want to select and move, otherwise it's going to create errors. And hopefully if you've done this the right way, and I hope you have, then you won't have any weird parts where it's kind of connecting and shouldn't. What I mean by that is kind of this would connect to the top and bits like that. You don't want those. Okay, so come round, and as you can see we've got like the Batman helmet shit going on here. So now I can use an extrude. And I'm extruding by local normal. Okay, and right, so let's have a look. So if I was to extrude the polygons by let's say 0.75 and just hit tick plus or whatever. Okay, so that's a tiny increment. And then increment them by eight and click plus. Okay, and that's a much larger one, and then 0.75 again and click plus. And uh, uh, no. <sighs> plus. Ugh, did it again, wrong way. Hang on. It's eight, not point not point eight. Where well, you advise me there? Eight. I can see you and I even have an bit of an indemnity thing going on here. One there. And click tick. Okay, so that gives us the right number now. Okay. Now we've still got obviously some quite soft stuff going on on the inside here, some soft edges. But because we've got one big loop, I can stick a loop in there and that will basically clean up this. However, I don't want to clean this up just yet. What I want to do is change some of the shapes to make them a little bit more effective. So I'm going to do that in the next part. So until then, TTFN.